a very good afternoon to everyone. Firstly, uh, let me thank uh, Sitra leadership and management team for the invitation. It is indeed my pleasure to be here today. Um, for the last 30 years, I've been working outside of Malaysia, though Malaysia is very close to my heart. Okay? So just briefly about myself, I've been in an industry for about 30 years, semiconductor industry. So this is really uh, uh, my territory or my campo. And in my past life, I was responsible for 7,000 employees, six world-class fabs, all of them were automotive fabs. We were running uh, parts for automotive under the hood, above the hood. And I can tell you a bit more later over T, the challenges in automotive. And I also was responsible for a $2.5 billion revenue site with PNL responsibilities. But I left all that in early 2013 to start our own technology and semiconductor startups. And today, uh, I'm going to share some of those uh, things that we've been doing for the last six years. Today's talk is on mobility. And mobility is about smartphones, wearables, portable headcare, point of care diagnostics. It's all about miniaturization, portability, longer battery life, everybody needs more data, faster processing, and also the next modes of transportation. Assuming if this is a, a button that if I press, we go 50 years forward, 50 years in the future where our grandkids and their kids are living. Their lives is going to be very different. Mobility is going to take a totally different dimension in the next 50 years. In 50 years from today, you will have robots and cyborgs doing most of our jobs, which will leave some of us to go travel outside of planet Earth. And you will have mankind colonizing Mars and elsewhere in the next 50 years. That capability is there even in the next 30 years. 40% of the world's population will be telecommuting, working from wherever they are. And you have quantum devices, quantum sensors, which can medically diagnose you non-invasively. Right? So life is going to really change in the next 50 years. In fact, it's already changing now, but it's going to leave frog. So in 50 years' time, if we look at this and we will say that this is our future generations will have the power of superheroes. Or if the ancient Romans were here, they will say that this is demigods. Right? And that's what technology does to the world and to the universe. But behind all these capabilities and wonderful products, what is the key thing that drives and fuels this innovation. It is semiconductor. It is semiconductor, semiconductor chips, and a wafer fab is in the heart of semiconductor. Without semiconductor and the progress it has done, a lot of things that you see today and what's going to happen in the next 50 years is not going to be there. And broadly speaking, there are two types of emerging technologies. The world knows a lot about the mainstream Bleeding edge digital technologies. The microprocessors, the microcontrollers, the graphics. This is driven by mainstream technologies. And the term, it is bleeding. Why is it bleeding? Why is it called bleeding? Because you will need to spend US 10 to 20 billion dollars to build one fab. They can do 7 nanometer to 14 nanometer. In my past life, when we built a 12-inch fab, we spent like four to five billion dollars. They can do 40, 45 nanometer and bigger. But to build a seven nanometer to 40 nanometer, it's a cool 10 to 20 billion dollars. That's why it's bleeding edge. And there's only maybe four nations that have this capability, US, Intel, uh, Taiwan, TSMC, Samsung, South Korea, and maybe Japan still has uh, the capability to do 7 nanometer. But the thing that I find sexy is in the next slide. 
right? This has been my passion, and this is what I've been working for most of my 30 years. Emerging niche technologies that you can do today in Malaysia. You can build these chips in Sultera. So this can be done on 8-inch fabs, 200mm fabs. So what is special about these technologies? You don't need 10 to 20 billion dollars. It's still it's a lot of money. Sultera is a lot of money, right? But it's not 10 to 20 billion dollars. It takes about 10 to 15 years to develop these technologies. And that's a pretty long time. Which even TSMC and global foundries cannot afford that long period of development for a given technology. Hence, for this type of technologies, you have the top research institutes in the world, the top engineering universities in the world, developing this process without the pressure of commercialization with a lot of money coming from their governments, from Uncle Sam and etc. This is a space that IGSS Ventures plays. So we have partners, trusted partners in Singapore, in US, in UK, in Malaysia obviously, very important partner in Malaysia, and also in China. What is special about these technologies is It links two different semiconductor worlds, and I'll talk about that later in the next slide. Another term I call for these technologies is, is technologies of the future. But not a very distant future, it's already happening. You have products coming out from these technologies, but the volume production can take another two years. In five years' time, this will be a big volume runner for specific fabs, hopefully for Sotera too. So this technology produces chips for autonomous and electric vehicles, the next generation. Artificial intelligence, which in Industry 4.0 requires. 5G infrastructure, Internet of Things, next generation sensors, quantum sensors, everything that is emerging will need chips from these technologies. So I call it the link. These technologies links two separate semiconductor worlds. On the left-hand side, you have the compound semiconductor world. You do not have any compound fabs in Malaysia or in most parts of the world. The TAM is about 60 billion. It is low capacity because it's done on two-inch wafers, four-inch wafers, and even in some fabs, the two-inch wafer is cut into four quadrants. It has very poor integration, very manual, but Compound has superior material properties that silicon can't smell for certain applications. On the right-hand side, you have silicon semiconductor, which produces more than 90% of all our semiconductor needs. Capacity-wise, it's very, very wide, more than 1,000 times the size. Highly integrated. It uses state-of-the-art tools, 8-inch to 12-inch. The technologies we are focusing on, gallium nitride on silicon. The gallium nitride comes from the compound world. Silicon, obviously, from the silicon world. Silicon photonics. The photonics comes from the compound world. Silicon, obviously, you know where it comes from, right? That's the link. So here, by having these technologies, you have the best of both worlds. Right? You have the superior properties of the compound world, plus the cost competitiveness of the silicon world and the super large ecosystem that's already there in the world. So let's talk a bit more about gallium nitride on silicon. It can be gallium nitride on silicon, it's going to be, it can also be gallium nitride on silicon carbide. Chips from the gallium nitride on silicon is going to go into all these wonderful applications. So today, we have customers who are working on what they call as quantum sensors made from gallium nitride on silicon. So these sensors can diagnose a medical problem non-invasively. It will still take another three to five years to get that done. But it's already happening. You're going to have gallium nitride power management in the next generation automotive and electric cars. 
and I will share with you later what does, what does that do to the electric cars. This is the actual product of gallium nitride on silicon on the right hand side. So when we leave home today, assuming you are taking a business trip, you will always carry a power charger. One for your laptop, one for your phone, right? And that's what you see on your left hand side. This is a product that is made from gallium nitride. Multiple functions on one single product, the size of a lipstick, right, is this big. So you're able to combine more functions and reduce almost 50% of the size. Automotive cars and electric cars, you have been having that for the last five years. But in the next three to five years, you're going to have the next generation of electric cars where the weight is going to be 50% lighter because of band gap materials, gallium nitride. Or the weight can be the same, but you can travel two to three x the distance on the single charge. And that makes the whole difference to the world adopting this kind of technology. In 10 to 12 years, all the largest automobile companies in the world would be almost producing just electric cars. That's going to be the future. Just give me a second, I'm a bit thirsty today. <laughs> ah. Now I'm going to a different technology, silicon photonics. Silicon photonics basically moves data at the speed of light. In the past, data used to move at the speed of electricity. And if you use pure compound products like indium phosphide, data can move at the speed of light, but it's super expensive. Super expensive that you cannot afford to implement across the whole infrastructure. Now with silicon photonics, you're combining the best of the silicon world and the beauty of the photonics world. So now you move data at the speed of light, but it's very affordable. It can be done in Certera. It can be done in fabs, 8-inch silicon fabs. While indium phosphate, you've got to do it in very small 2, 4-inch fabs, super manual, super difficult. And the material is brittle, right? And once you get into silicon photonics, the whole scalability improves from 2 inch all the way to 12 inch. The integration becomes very high. Cost becomes a fraction, right? And the production capability to produce silicon photonics is now suddenly becomes 1000x manifold. Today, we have been working on silicon photonics within IGSS Ventures, we have one subsidiary which is called Compound Tech. We've been working on silicon photonics for the last two years when we took it from one of our technology partners. And in the last 18 months, we have attracted 12 commercial customers globally from the multi billion dollar automotive guys in Japan to very exciting startups. And we also have 19 research institutes that has, that has designed they are products in our technology platforms, which is currently running in Satera. So that all happened in the last 15 to 18 months. 12 commercial customers, 19 research institutes. And then we just came back. I just came back from the US last Sunday. Right? And we, we were participating in OFC, which is the Optical Fiber Convention, which is the number one uh, conference that uh, everybody goes to in the US. Right? And we had unexpectedly 43 customer meetings. Nine of them were existing customers, 34 were new customers who were designing into this technology. That's how fast it is spreading, right? It will still take another two years to get into massive production volume, but this is the future. We are focusing on the future. So out of the 12 commercial customers we have today, about half of them come from the datacom telecom world, working on chips for the next generation data centers which is going to be important for 5G infrastructure, for IoT and etc. 
the balance half comes from very exciting fields. We have two customers from artificial intelligence. One from quantum computing. One more customer from uh, biomedical, okay, working on, on chips and the procedure that will shorten the whole diagnosis in the emergency rooms. We also have customers working on LIDAR, a multi-billion dollar Japanese giant for automotive industry. This wafer, this chip is around running in Satera. Okay? So it's a very exciting field. There are challenges because when you talk about silicon photonics, it is managing electricity and optics. It is about managing electrons and photons. So for the silicon guys, the silicon part is a piece of cake. Arjun has no problems doing that. But the part about managing optics, that's a different world for the second guy. So that's why it takes about 10 to 15 years to develop these technologies. Okay, my next slide is going to be a short video, two minutes video on compound tech, which focuses on silicon photonics. I'm a firm believer that technology needs to make the world a better place. It got to bring benefit to mankind, right? And, and that's the passion some of us carry when we do our work. And when we are working on technologies like this, we need very strong partners. Okay? And Sitara is our strategic foundry partner for our key technologies. Okay? Why did we choose Sitara? We had a few options, but why did we choose Sitara? It's more from the fact that uh, that I'm a Malaysian, but it's more than that. We have known the Citra management team and uh, leadership since 2009. We started to work together in 2015 to improve the FAB performance. In 2017, we started transferring the advanced silicon photonics modules over to Citra. And in 2018, we started transferring gallium nitride on silicon. Right? So it's a trusted partnership, and that is very important for, for my companies, okay? because the technologies we are working on is emerging. Okay? The know-how and IP is important. We can't have that uh, getting out to China, for example. Okay? So, so, uh, and we trust Sutra a lot. The second is that there's great alignment with, both between Sutra and IGSS Ventures. We believe that the niche technologies is the space that we want to focus on, even for Sutra. If they were to focus on mainstream technologies, there's another 100 fabs everywhere, in China, in Taiwan, in South Korea, everywhere. And they're much bigger than Sutera. Pricing is very competitive. You can't compete. 
But on these technologies, the margins are much higher. That 100 competitors become three or four competitors. Right? So it's a different space. And both of us are determined to become a global champion. We want to put Malaysia and the region okay, as a global champion in selective technologies. It's tough. It is too late to work on bleeding-edge technologies. You can, but if somebody is willing to put $20 billion, then we'll start the journey. But if you're not, then this is the space to play. And it makes a big difference to mankind and the universe. So, to summarize, the technologies that we play links two very important semiconductor world. I firmly believe that this is going to be the future. How we take the superior properties of the compound semiconductor and integrate that with the silicon semiconductor, which is super cheap, super scalable. These technologies will produce systems, chips, that is 80% smaller, 70% lighter, highly high integration, super scalability, utilizes the wide silicon ecosystem that we have globally. And our grandkids will have flying cars in their garages. They'll be working on quantum computers, not the computers that we are working on today. Okay? With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and patience.